Like it's using language that your audience understands at their point in their journey. You have to take yourself back to that point. Welcome back to the expert series on Aligned with Purpose. And our guest today is Helen Thacker. And she's a sales and strategy mentor who's built award-winning six-figure businesses from scratch. She helps coaches and entrepreneurs really increase their visibility, authority, and sales with impactful messaging, powerful content, and community connection. And really in this episode, we're going to be discussing content. We're going to go deep into messaging and really the importance of showing up fearlessly as yourself, as an entrepreneur. And Helen's wealth of experience and insights is really going to provide valuable guidance on defining your purpose, fulfilling your potential, and really stepping into your power. So super excited to dive in and welcome you to the show today. Oh, Jamie, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And yeah, hey to everyone listening. Mm, Thank you so much. And I, I really would love to hear a bit of your story. Like, what do you feel like has been this transition for you to really step into and align with your purpose? Yeah. Oh, it's, do you know, what? I was talking about this earlier today and I discussed this a lot because sometimes I think we reflect back on our childhood. I don't know if you kind of resonate with this at all, if anyone listening does, but we look back at the things that we really genuinely um, enjoyed doing that lit us up as a child. And it's so funny that those kind of core kind of almost instinctive things that we were either good at or that we absolutely love doing we seem to like really drift back to and it's like you know doing a full circle um for what you are supposed to do and I know not everyone has the privilege of doing that but my journey has definitely led me back to the things that I really really love doing as a child and that's language I was always obsessed with language mm-hmm. um and you know I was always like you know loved English I've loved learning languages and that's really coming through in my kind of communication that I do with my clients and helping them to communicate clearly through obviously the content, everything that I do. And also teaching. I was almost a teacher. So when I left college, um, I applied to be a teacher and I decided that it wasn't for me at the time because a teacher, oh, it's, you know, anyone who is listening that is a teacher, you guys are angels. You know, it really is a give you absolutely everything to the job. And at that point in time, I felt that I just wasn't right. I couldn't, I couldn't guarantee that I was going to give my all. So yeah, I I moved on to other things and that's when my kind of entrepreneurial journey started. But funny how I've come back to life as a coach. It's something I am obsessed with and, and helping people to really communicate through powerful language. So yeah, here we are. But yeah, it's been a journey. I don't know how deep you want me to go into like, the various things that I have done, but yeah, just let me know. I'm happy Mm. to share. Mm. Well, I'm curious, like with your own messaging and your own content story and community building, like, did you always have that figured out or like what had, what like called you to be more niche down to these specific problems that are happening in the market? Yeah, I think this came with practice and time. Again, it's part of this journey of like my journey has definitely been one of self-discovery, of going from someone who had very little self-confidence and self-worth through to someone that feels really confident and, you know, really powerful in what I do and how I can help other, particularly women, to have huge success in their business. And I think it came with that, the refining of that really came with just practice. It came with me discovering what I really enjoyed doing, what I was good at, what got me out of bed in the morning, lit me up and just made me think, yes, I've got something to share with the world. I really want to say what I have to say. And as this journey went on, the more and more impact that I've made with women um, and helping them to grow a successful business, helping them to feel really confident in who they are and finding their true purpose um you know that that has just really excited me and that is honestly genuinely I it gives me butterflies I'm just so it gives me goosebumps I'm so like I feel so blessed and so fulfilled um but it has definitely been a journey you know I'm like in my mid-40s and it's taken some time and that's the other thing I talk about a lot because Mm. I think sometimes you're thinking oh when is it going to happen for me and I just say you know, put one foot in front of each other every single day and you will get there for sure. Yeah. Mm, That's so true. It's so true. And I feel like that's, that's the whole thing of entrepreneurship that I feel like so many people see it and they're like, oh, it's this glamorous 
thing. And yes, it absolutely can be, but they don't see the impact or, the, or how important it is to put one foot in front of the other and just keep going and keep trusting. And I feel like that's a struggle for a lot of people, especially in the beginning, is to just trust that they're heading in the right direction. Absolutely. And you know what, Jamie, as well, I think we're in such a rush these days to get to where we think we're supposed to be. I've always played the long game and, you know, I am absolutely living proof. I did not know, you know, 20 years ago when I first started my business, my first, you know, foray into entrepreneur life and, and growing a business from scratch. I didn't know I was going to end up here, but I knew that I, I wanted to make an impact. I knew that I wanted to be successful. I'm not afraid to say that. I wanted to help other people. And yeah, it's, I'm definitely the definition of like playing the long game and seeing where it takes me for sure. But um, there is, there's often a rush these days to kind of find that thing, that magic kind of secret source or the thing that's going to make you millions or whatever it is we're looking mm. for, fame, the fortune. Um, you know, we have to let, you know, we have to allow ourselves to grow into who we're supposed to be. Yeah. Mm, so true. So true. And I know, and there's that always, always that like supposed to be. Like, yeah. oh, we, and and I find on the journey too, it's like, you might think in the beginning you're supposed to be, or it's supposed to look this way. And then it ends up looking like something completely different, but it's all in your evolution and in, in your journey. And I'm mm -hmm. curious, like on your journey, mm -hmm. you know, building multiple six figure businesses from scratch, what do you feel like were some of the really key lessons that you learned along the way? And what advice would you give to others or someone who might be listening, who is just starting their journey? So never be afraid to start from scratch. That's the first lesson. I've done it several times due to different circumstances in my life. Um, you know, started my first business. I created um, a financial recruitment company and built that to six figures and stopped that because I had my two boys. So there was life circumstances that really kind of I wanted to be a mom and do all of that. So that happened. Um and starting all over again when I'd had the boys and I was like, right, I need to kind of wanted to earn, needed to earn, wanted to kind of contribute. And I started a wedding cake business, completely different, but it was something that I did from home around my kids. And again, I started from scratch with absolutely zero experience, but it was something I knew I loved. I knew it was something that would fit our family lifestyle at the time. And on both of these examples, I did two things. Um, and that was like I said, not be afraid to start from the beginning, knowing and accepting. This is the big piece that a lot of people miss, but accepting that you are going to be on a learning curve. You are not going to get everything right for a very long time. You know, you have to accept that. Um, and if you kind of just settle in and say, right, three to five year plan, let's think that far ahead. I'm not thinking about the month, whether it's been a good month, bad month, financial. I'm thinking about three to five years ahead all the time. And the second thing is, obviously, it's going and getting the help, going and learning, getting the coaching, investing, you know, investing in your business um, is is essential. Like it's an it's an absolute essential if you want to, to succeed. And, you know, so many people say to me, I want that lifestyle. I want all the experiences. I want the six figure, multi six figure income, whatever it is that they're looking for. And they say it and they get all excited and they're dreaming about it. And it, it's a great vision to have. It's a great dream to have. But, you know, it's it's all exciting until the hard work begins. And you need to put that hard work in. And that involves to get you from that point where you are now to where you really are going to be able to live out that vision. You're going to have to invest in learning how to do that. And unfortunately, <laughs> it's unavoidable. You can take your time if you want, you know, you can, you know, listen to podcasts and, you know, great podcasts like yours. Fantastic. You know, go and listen and learn. But you need that coach. You need that accountability. You need that person who's gone before to really show you the way and kind of skip past all the mistakes and help guide you. So, yeah, that was the other thing that has accelerated my growth every single time. Yeah. Mm, completely agree. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. Being fearlessly you is like mm -hmm. one of your core principles of your approach. And I'm curious, like that's fearless. Like I know yeah. I remember the first time I whipped out my card, my credit card actually, yeah. to pay for an investment for myself. And I was terrified. It's like, yeah, oh my gosh, terrifying. all these feelings, all these thoughts. So like, can you give me more of a specific example of maybe how, like how you've helped a client or you've even helped yourself 
overcome mm-hmm. maybe that self-doubt that creeps in or that imposter syndrome and really step into your power and say, no, I'm building this. I'm going to do this thing. Absolutely. And that might involve yeah. investing. Yeah, yeah it, it does. And that is, it is a scary moment, isn't it? Because it's right. all that, involved. am I going to get that back? Is it going to work? Mm-hmm. Have I picked the right coach? It's really scary the first time you do it. Um, but really when it comes to what I do with like helping people to create a really strong message with their sales and helping them really to market what they do, it is about communicating what who you are fearlessly. And it is through helping clients to get brave through their content. And we break down, you know, we have conversations about their values, their beliefs, what they stand for, you know, against perhaps the things that are going on in the industry. If they don't agree, I help them to really communicate that and say it and stand up because there is a lot of noise on social media and you have to be fearless if you're going to stand out. There are 60 so million, true. yeah, 60 million social media posts per day. And it's crazy. You wow. Know? Yeah. I mean, you how do you break through the noise? And the way you break through is by being fearlessly you, by being unafraid to show who you are, stand up for what you have to say and say it. I mean, there's lots of other things, you know, about how to create incredible, exciting, powerful content that connects. But it's, you know, when it comes to actually finding that confidence, it is to do with your 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 personal values and um like I said really really been unafraid to say that and the minute that you are authentically you and you stop trying to copy the coach that's five years ahead of you or the person that's in your industry that's five years ahead of you and think that that's what you've got to do to be successful no you haven't you've got to be you right now at this point on your path and you know really be confident about that and allow yourself to stand out being the incredible, unique you that you are. The minute that you are not authentically you is the quickest way to failure. People can see it a mile off. Yeah. They don't want to connect with people that's a fake half version of somebody else. They want you. And we are all so uniquely incredible. We all have amazing talents. And I really love seeing my clients come out the other side and they're like, get the results. They, you know, people are commenting, people are messaging them and They are growing their business because they've just found that bravery. And trust me, I know, because I I really, I was so unconfident. I really was. So I've I've been there and I know it's difficult, but I because I've been there, I really feel I can walk my clients through it. And I just I just love seeing the result. It's it's magical. Mm. Oh yeah. And then who they become on that journey as well, I'm sure is just so cool to see like before and then after in their level of confidence too. Absolutely. And it's like a snowball effect, isn't it? It's like that momentum. And suddenly they find their confidence that way. And then they start showing up as a a better coach or as a better businesswoman. And it all kind of that momentum feeds into like really every part of their life. And they feel like, yeah, I can be a better parent. I can be a better partner. I can be a better businesswoman, a better teacher. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, we spend most of our days working, you know, predominantly like a big part of our lives. And when you can really kind of find the fearlessness in that, yeah, it really filters out into other areas. Definitely. I've seen that. Hmm. Incredible. Incredible. And now I know too, like a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with content creation. Like you said, there's like how many 600 million 60 million. 60 million. 60 million. Okay. I was like, wow, people are going like extra crazy these days, uh-huh. but still 60 million. That's insane. So then really, how do you create content that connects and attracts correctly in the online space? Okay. So firstly, it is about getting really, really specific. So you have to get very, very specific on exactly the problem that you're solving. So this is the first step. So your niche is not your ideal client. It's not a person. It's not an avatar, whatever you want to call it. It's who you, it's the problem that you solve because that could serve like a very, very wide range of people. So Mm -hmm. you've got to get really super clear on, on that yourself. Um, You need to know where you're going and then you're going to communicate that very clearly on your social media. And then it's how you communicate. It's complete clarity Like it's using language that your audience understands at their point in their journey. You have to take yourself back to that point. And then it's about being really, really specific in terms of helping guide them through the challenges and helping them to see how they can achieve what they really desire in life. 
And the exercise that I do with all my clients is I want them to write down like a day in the life, a week in the life and a year in the life of their client, their audience. And I want them to think about all those pinch points, all those moments when, you know, they might be getting up at the start of the day, they feel a certain way and why comes to lunchtime or they're at work in the office, you know, why do they feel the way they are? How are they feeling challenged? At the weekend, you know, that's different as well. This is why I go through like a, a week in the life. Weekends are different from days. And I get everyone to write down those, like I said, equally, the things where they need help with and, and kind of coaching through, but also the things they really want, the experiences that they desire to have in life, the lifestyle that they want. And then it's about really talking about those specifically and attaching emotions to those as well, because this is how you're going to connect with your audience. Your audience are going to see that content and they're going to be like, that's me. That's me at that point in my day. And I'm feeling that way. And Jamie knows me. She can see, she knows exactly what I'm going through. And now she's telling me the mistakes that I'm making, why I'm not getting to the point that I want to get get to. And she's given me the solution. In your audience's eyes, if you do that, you are the leader, you have the authority and you have the expertise and they're going to keep coming back to you because they trust that what you're saying is going to help and support them. So it's about being very, very clear. It's about connecting specifically with specific examples of challenges and it's about connecting with emotion as well. And there are lots and lots and lots of different things you can do, like clever ways that you can construct your content um, you know, getting edgy is always great. Like I said, be bold and edgy. But there are a lot, like I said, that, you know, there's a, we could talk for hours about actual specifics of content. If you go to my Instagram page, you can see kind of it yeah. in action, as it were. But yeah, those are the key points I would say for people to focus on clarity, specificity and emotion. Mm. Oh, this is great. And then when it comes to the emotion, like can you go a bit deeper on that? Because you were talking about, you know, making sure that you're clear on the vision and where you're going and maybe the struggles that you've had. But if you could expand on that part a bit, because mm. I feel like emotion, I yeah. mean, yeah, that's where you, I agree. That's where you truly connect, but I would love to hear more. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, people often, a mistake they make is they use very vague words. So they'll use words like overwhelmed, stressed, um, and we actually can go deeper than that. We can actually kind of get deeper into the language and think, right, exactly what was it that like, was making them feel overwhelmed? Is it like the pressure do they feel? Do they feel like they're disorganized? You know, it's really kind of delving into that. So it's thinking about those moments, you know, for example, you can talk about, for example, say you're a fitness coach and you're coaching women to really feel like empowered in their bodies who they are like let's try and coach women through body issues like give them that confidence that they are amazing no matter what shape size whatever they are and you might be talking to your clients who are getting up in the morning and feeling really like you can use words like deflated depressed really um annoyed angry even that they don't have anything in their wardrobe to wear they really want to give up for the day already. And you can talk around things like that, but it's about getting into the soul of your ideal client and really thinking, how are they feeling in that moment? You know, you've really got to put themselves, put yourself in their shoes and exactly how they're feeling. You know, if you're a mom and, you, you know, you're coaching moms, like what is it about those pinch points in a day in the life of a mom? Are they feeling like they just need that time to themselves? Is it is it claustrophobic, you know, for example? And and really, really, really thinking about those specific emotions. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That makes so much sense. It's yeah, instead of using like more of the generic words that everybody could use, you're yeah. calling out the very specific feeling, like almost mm-hmm. like if she was to go, okay, this mom, she was to go to coffee with her best friend. Yeah that's how she would explain it. She wouldn't necessarily say I'm overwhelmed. Maybe she'd start there. But then yeah. when you get her to open up more, that's what's going to pop. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You've really got to delve deep into it. Definitely. Because there is, like I said, there is so much noise out there. You have to be the one that stands out and they're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And they're like, oh, Jamie knows she's, she, she's in my head. You know, she knows exactly mm-hmm how I'm feeling because you know building a business is all about connection and this is you know something that I've 
done from the very start you know this is my businesses have always been about connection with my clients and building that strong relationship and it's no different when you're building a business online you have to grab that attention and connect with your audience yeah 100 mm, percent mm, beautiful now when you're speaking about the messaging part because I know that's where a lot of people I feel kind of rush through the messaging part when they're building up their business and then it's like they get to a certain point and kind of have to go back to the drawing board. It never feels quite right. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So I know this was like, this was a long, this took me a long time to Mm -hmm. figure out in my business truly. So what do you do with your clients to help them figure out messaging? That's really going to attract and also embody like the vision that they Mm -hmm. have for their business. Yeah, it honestly, Jamie, it comes with practice. It really comes with time. It comes with looking at, what feels right for you and um, it comes with what's connecting with your clients looking at you know what what is resonating where are people engaging where are people commenting what are people saying about things and it's again goes back to being brave it's like you know say what you want to say I would say you know you've got to put content out there that is is as if you were speaking to a friend in a in line in Starbucks you know you were just talking and talking about a specific thing you've got to use the language that would come out of your mouth naturally. Um, A lot of that comes back, like I said, it is practice. I've just been speaking with a client now this morning, actually, and she's not too, based from not too far from you. And and she was, um, we were talking through like getting her messaging right. She's a stylist, actually. And she's looking for the right words to embody exactly what it is that she does. And I just talked through this with her and I said, well, I want you to tell me like what result you get for your client. Like, how does your client feel when they have worked with you? And she's like, and how do you want them to feel? And she said, I want them to have like ease and comfort and fun with their wardrobe. I was like, okay. So we kind of came to those conclusions after a bit of discussion and we're going to build in language that is around those words, like those core principles of like what she is going to communicate. So that's the kind of desired feel that she wants to give her clients. And really coming onto your social media, I should have started with this. It is all about giving your client, your audience an experience. So it's building the language around that experience that you want to give your audience. Mm. Um, And again, it comes back to not comparing, not looking and not copying other people in your industry. Go and find your own voice. And I promise you'll find it and it will take time. It's like it is like exercising a muscle. (laughs) You've got to get the reps in to build that muscle, you know, and you're going to find what really feels good and natural to you. And the minute that I I started just content was pouring out of me. Like I was like, I have so much to say. I could post like seven times a day. I knew that I'd found my groove and I was like, this Mm. is it. So easy because I think people do find content. Some people find content difficult. And when you become yourself and it's authentic and the messaging is really you, it's so much easier. It's so much easier to be you, right? Than trying to be someone else. Mm, so true. And then in this process of having that strong messaging, being fearlessly you mm-hmm. and creating this content, you're building a community as well. And so I didn't want to like breeze over like the big picture here of like having these soul mate clients. So I want to hear about the community that you've built and really mm-hmm. your process for doing that. Cause I think that's such a beautiful thing. Especially when it online, it's like can feel so huge. Yeah. And it sounds like yeah. you've made it very special and quaint. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it all comes down to this say the, you know, the age old thing of just you've got to give so much value to your community. You really have to serve. And especially at the beginning when you're building a business, you know, you really have to give, 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 give so much because you need to be building up your reputation, your reputation for giving value and serving. And for what I've done is build, I've obviously got my podcast community, but I, I created a community of super fans of people who, you know, look for my posts on Instagram through being myself. And then I also have my Facebook group and I do a lot of work with my clients about the importance of building a community over on Facebook because that is like, there is no other place in my opinion, like no other platform that is better. I know there are other options, but that is better than a Facebook group to do that. And I don't really use Facebook for anything else. Um, Instagram is my jam. I'm obsessed with Instagram. I get it. I understand it. I love it. 
But Facebook, you know, for a group and building community is you can't beat. And I give just tons of value in there. And I've created this community where, again, it's value, 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 value. And that it's the, you know, when you've got a great community, when you've got a place where people are talking to each other within it. So that's the special thing, you know, um, and that's what I've really created within my Facebook group and what I help with my clients as well. It's about getting the people in there to be like they're part of a secret club. They're, they're communicating with each other. They're networking. You're inviting them in. And honestly, I think so abundantly. I'm like, go in, collect, connect, collaborate with other people. I don't care. You know, the world's a huge place. Go on, have my clients. I don't mind. <laughs> you know, if you, you know, I'm not an expert at everything. If there's someone in there that can help someone with something that I cannot do, absolutely. I want to create a place where it's women who are so empowered to help each other. And that's what I'm doing. Um, but it is all, it all starts with giving value um, and just really being generous. So generous. Why hold back? You know, there's no need to hold back. Mm. Oh, I love this. So in your Facebook community, do you go in there and and you do like live trainings and you do master classes and interviews? Like I'm curious, like what type of content are you doing more specifically inside of this group? So I do a weekly live training. So it's like a mini training on something that I've either asked people in the community, like, what are you struggling with right now? I tend I do master I tend to do master classes like longer master class that have a membership and it's like a subscription for master classes I do them in there but I do still live trainings in my Facebook group and um, I ask some questions I invite them to share what they do I invite them to talk about themselves people it's so funny it's so true people love to talk about themselves and every single time that I'll create a post and invite people to do that it goes crazy it's like you know, people love it, they jump on it. And, but that's, you know, that's what you want. I want people to share their expertise. It's about them, not me. And that's the key. Yeah. Mm, them, not me. I love that. I want to join. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. I want to check You're it out. <laughs> mm. So for those listening, like how do they find your Facebook group? Okay. So it's the power Sorry, it's the Purpose, Potential and Power Facebook group. Do you know what's something about me? I'm so real. I always get my words mixed up all the time. Um, so Purpose, Potential and Power is the name. It's the same name as my podcast. And that's where you can definitely go and find me. Um, but I, I run a free networking event every week as well. Um, and that is a fantastic place. That's really more for networking. And again, a lot of those women are making the most of that from my Facebook group. They're coming and communicating and, and collaborating over there as well. It's, it's a really great way to showcase. And I've got women in there from all over the world. Um, yeah, it's it's exciting. It's just beginning, you know, it's it's a really great place to start. But yeah, definitely go and find that. I'd love to welcome all your listeners for sure. Mm, amazing, amazing. And I'm curious, like, I don't know if you've ever gone through this, but have you ever had a client that maybe had a Facebook group Mm -hmm. And it was going really well. And then maybe it kind of stopped. Maybe it kind of died. And mm -hmm. they're like, do I start a new one? Do mm -hmm. I? Yeah. What do you, what advice do you have? They're asking yeah. for a friend. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I would say if it's active, if it's very engaged, you've got a group, you know, it's, it's now Facebook groups, engagement is a lot lower, you know, in terms of what you're going to see over on Instagram, you know, you won't get as many, potentially as many comments and likes on a post. So even if you have a Facebook group of say 2000 people in it, um, you, you might only get still a handful of comments on a pet on a post. So not to worry about that, but as long as it's generally getting like some engagement and it's alive as it were, it's not completely dead yeah, continue, keep going, restart it, reignite it. You could even, if you wanted to, if it was appropriate, I would advise, you know, my clients to create a new name for it, have a new cover page, like have a fresh slate. Um, but it's it will be down to the content that's going into it, making sure that you are serving. And maybe you need a different twist on the content. Maybe you need to just spice things up or like make things more interesting. But the thing with Facebook groups is that it requires constant looking after. It really is very high maintenance. <laughs> so okay. it's, uh, it's like a high maintenance girl. You need to be posting like every day. And um, the algorithm really doesn't like it when you stop. And I notice if I've ever had a break, so I've gone on vacation, I've maybe not posted for a few days. 
Uh, it might take a few days to kind of reignite it, but my group's big enough now that it's not so much of a problem. But when it's, you know, if it's fairly small at the beginning, it's, yeah, that can, you need to be consistent for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. But if it's not working and you feel like, "Mm, I just need a fresh start, there's not really my ideal clients are not in here. This isn't like the, this isn't the kind of topics that I really want to serve people with, with my expertise, just start again. It's no problem. We all got to start from zero somewhere. Yeah. I'm never yeah, I, from scratch so there you go <laughs> I'm, I'm bound to say yeah. that <laughs> yeah well and I love how a lot of your approach is like you've said it a few times it's like value value mm-hmm. show up provide value don't hold back and I think that's yeah I think that's really impactful it's our duty you know as as whatever we do as business owners People can go on Google, they can go and listen to a podcast, they can read a book. You know, there is a wealth of information out there. Um, and it's just our duty to share it um, and and share it in our unique way and translate it and help condense it and teach it in the way that we know our audience need it. So, yeah, there's there's no reason to hold back. <laughs> you know, good comes from, from not giving. I'm a huge believer in that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like just you're giving, you're showing up, you're building this is just pouring like your light onto everybody else. And so I love love it. Yeah. I just Mm -hmm. genuinely love what I do and I don't have any reason to start like, yeah. And if you love what you do, just, yeah, you've got to share, got to share that for sure. Mm, oh that's so beautiful and uh, I'm curious like when people come to you right your clients like I'm curious what is the number one commonality or the number one struggle you feel like they have and then how do you overcome that well it's a good question and um, when it comes to content there is one thing that I see people missing all the time and so we'll start there because Obviously, I am a I'm a sales coach and sales starts with content. That's every piece of content is an opportunity to market what you do. And every business needs to sell. Whether you want where you think you're sales in sales or not, if you have a business, you're in sales. I'm sorry to say. So I love sales. I absolutely love sales, I love selling in a non-salesy way. And um the thing I see so much in content that people are missing is not showing their audience that they have a problem. They're like not, they literally think they're teaching and they do like 70% educational content, the how-tos, the here's three ways to do this, here's five tips to overcome that. And there is no like actual highlighting to your audience. Oh, do you know what? I'm here to help you solve the problem that you haven't actually seen yet that you had. And it's so common. I see this all the time. So what's going to happen there is people are just going to scroll past because they're like, okay, as good as you might be as a coach, whatever it is that you do, if people are not seeing that you have anything of value for them, if they don't think they have the problem in the first place, they're not going to stop. So they need need to really show them in a nice way. You know, it's not like necessarily calling them out, but you need to absolutely highlight that they have a problem. And it's like the kind of, phrasing is is generally kind of like I'm willing to bet that you are experiencing x um this is what you're doing that is not working and not getting you the solution you want and here is the solution so if you're actually saying to people look I can see that you're doing this and it's not working they'll be like oh yes that, that's right you've got to show people the, the problem that they have and therefore there's a gap that they then see that they then look to you to fill and buy whatever it is that you have to to offer them. Ooh, I loved I love speaking to the gap. But yes. I love how yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're talking like widen the gap, show them that the gap even exists because I agree with you and I'm so guilty of this. It's like, okay, here's your problem, here's how here's how you solve it. Or even just here's how you solve it. Yeah. But they're like I don't have a gap. I don't know the problem. I don't understand it. Therefore, they're not looking for a solution. Therefore, they scroll. Mm. So yeah. true. A great example is a yeah. lot of people, and I've done this before, you know, we put a quote, put a really beautiful, empowering quote onto social media. We create a post and it's great and it looks great, but it isn't actually, what's the purpose behind it? What are you trying to teach with that mm. quote? Like, what is it? Where are you trying to take people from? And two with that quote, like that quote is the the end result. Like, where are you taking them from? What's the what's the issue that you that they have 
that means they need to see that empowering quote and mm. you know it's, that's a really kind of common way of thinking about it that's not to say don't put quotes on absolutely but you can talk through this in the caption itself or you can mix it up and make sure that if you do use a quote it's perhaps the final slide on a carousel and you're talking people through to that end quote mm. and that's the oh, that's really cool and I'm curious in your opinion like I mean, we're speaking content. That's a lot of time, effort, and energy that goes into building this this content that we're speaking about. Mm -hmm. How important is it to make sure that you're staying on top of what's happening with like the algorithms? And I know they they're shifting and they're changing. I think at the end of the day, it's always like the same purpose. But yeah, I'm curious your thoughts on that. Do you know what, Jamie? I don't worry about that at all because I just think okay, yeah, yeah, going to be able to keep up. It's always changing. I don't work at Instagram. I don't have that right. connection. So, you know, I'm not Brock Johnson or Shilling Johnson who's, you know, who gets all the info first. So you just have to keep trusting that, putting out great value content that is serving your audience consistently. So I post every single day is going to be what is going to grow your business. I mean, you can absolutely grow a six-figure, multi-six-figure, seven-figure business using social media. I have grown my business without a single advert, you know, paying for a single ad. It's all organic growth, which means just by posting and connecting and making those deep connections in the in the DMs, actually building real relationships with my followers and that community and nurturing them on Facebook. You know, that's how it works. You don't have to like try and beat the algorithm. You just have to be very consistent with the value that and how you show up. Mm, that's so true. So true. And that's also focusing on purpose, which I love. Mm, okay. Yeah. So then I, I'm curious on your journey, has there been a book, a podcast, a resource, like something that you could leave us with today that really supported your journey? Oh, there are so many because I am no, right. obsessed with learning. I'm obsessed with like, and I'm always discovering new podcasts. Like, you know, I've discovered yours fairly recently. I'm always discovering great inspirational things that help me. And I think it varies as well. Like I, I would say be open-minded to people. I know this is not the answer, but like be open-minded and go and challenge yourself and go and listen to a podcast in a skill set area that you either haven't looked at before Mm -hmm. um, that you really kind of maybe challenges you a little, little bit. So, you know, go and listen to some content um, podcasts, go and listen to some marketing podcasts if you need help on that area. Um, so definitely like go and vary as well. I think it's really good to mix things up. So maybe you do something that's very educational. The next time it might be more spiritual or mindset based. Um, oh my goodness. I'm trying to think of a book. I have a like a bookshelf behind me <laughs> with behind the cover there. <laughs> But um, a book that I'm reading at the moment, which has been really, really helpful, is called Hook Points. And that, again, is if you are looking for content tips, that's a really great book. Um, okay. But so many have, like, changed me through the years. Um, Michael Singer. Oh, I'm trying to think of so many. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a really rubbish answer. <laughs> that's OK. No, it's Hook Points. Yeah, that's a Got good it. one to start for marketing. Okay. It's a place. We're talking content. That's a really great place to go and start. Yeah. OK. Beautiful. Cool. And then where can you be found on social media? Feel free to share wherever you like. Thank you. Yeah. So Instagram is just my name. I'm sure you'll put it on the show notes, but Helen yeah. Sacker. And obviously, yeah, my podcast and Facebook group, both of which have the same name, Purpose, Potential and Power. I got it right that time. So go and find me there. <laughs> But honestly, come and say hi in the DMs. I am such an open book. I'm so I love to talk, as you can probably tell. And um, so come, I would love to, you know, if you slide into my DMs, it will be me, not my VA. And I will definitely, definitely come and say hi. I'd love to kind of, yeah, connect with with everyone. Mm. Okay, I'm sorry. I got one last question now because yeah. of what you just said right. about the DMs. <laughs> and yeah, that is <laughs> like I'm curious how how do you find the time? Because you're saying like daily posts, communities, lives, being active completely in your DMs, like that's mm -hmm. something, I mean, I also like, I built my business thoroughly organic for a while too, but then it's kind of like, I wanted to step away from the computer. So how do you find that balance? Yeah. Not so, spend all your time behind the screen. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I block. I do work hard. And right now I'm in a build mode. So I am one of my core values is integrity. And I won't lie and say that I am not busy. I am very, very busy. And I love what I do. So yeah, I do spend a lot of time working. But I also do two things. I don't uh, I take Fridays for myself. Like I block you will not be able to book anything on, on my calendar on a Friday. That doesn't mean that I don't necessarily work on that day, but I will go and, you know, there will be times um, when I will definitely go and take some time out. But I'll be like chilling on the sofa, maybe kind of playing around with my, you know, with some canvas, or I might be just making some notes about writing my next masterclass for my mastermind, something that I love doing. Um, but also prioritizing. So every single day for the first hour of my day, I have on my whiteboard, the four core things that I need to do. And that is really dive, one of those is diving into my DMs. And I have to make that a priority. Those are the things that are going to grow my business. So they get done first. Um, literally have it on the timer. Yeah, it's just about being organized. At the end of the day, a business is absolutely about being organized for sure. Ooh, okay. What are the core four? Do you mind sharing? Oh, the core four. So uh-huh. <laughs> get into my DMs. So that's the first one. Mm-hmm. Second okay. one is go and introduce myself to anyone that's new into my world. So anyone that's followed me, that's not a new follower, or maybe someone that's looked at my stories particularly stories going engaging with the people who are looking there because they're the ones that really want to know the juice, the details behind the posts, create content. So I create my posts for the day and I also plan my stories out for the day. So that's the four things that I do at the start and that is going to grow my business. And then the rest of it, it will really vary depending on what I've got going on, client calls, podcast recordings and all those kind of things. But when I say co- create my content, it's usually around an offer and that will include my content that goes everywhere. So the Instagram, Facebook group, um, an email, maybe it'll, but I repurpose a lot as well that, you know, I repurpose my content everywhere. Um, but mm. I think we know how to do that now. So that's nothing, that's not a new trick I'm sharing. <laughs> mm. I'm really glad we opened that up, by the way, because I yeah. feel like I do a I do like a DM power hour in the morning and yeah. then I'm like only in the DMs for that hour. But I like how you do like the core four. And so it's like a bit more creative, too, because sometimes I feel like when I'm just zoned on that one thing, it kind of becomes almost like checking the box versus Absolutely. like, I guess, yeah, I'm all about being authentic, too. Like sometimes that's how it feels when it's too long. Yeah. And an hour for me doing that feels too long. So I love yeah. how you incorporate. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Seriously, okay. I'm going to do and the core four and I'm going to integrate that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, definitely. Love well, it. thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have anything else that's like coming through right now that you're like, oh, I got to share this. I want a mic drop moment for you. Oh, now you're putting me under pressure, Jamie. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, no pressure, no pressure. Just any any thoughts or feelings just coming up before we wrap it up. I would, I would just love to encourage everyone to be so completely fearless. You know, we do spend so much of our life worrying about what other people think of us. And I had this light bulb moment just coming up for a year ago. I'm like mid 40s. I'm still worried about what someone's thinking about me. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is so, so, so freaking ridiculous. (laughs) I was like, what is this going to go on for? And I just made a decision in that moment to just not worry about it and just step into who I am, like 100%. And everything changed. So if I can leave you with one kind of little light bulb, whatever that is, please, yeah, just... Be, find that moment find that bravery because it really will open up like what you are supposed to do I truly believe that thank you so much I really appreciate you for being here it means the world oh, thank you so much Jamie I've loved this thank you